We're reading New Jersey. A three-year moratorium on charter schools has been introduced in the state Senate after years of generating controversy. Criticized in Newark for siphoning off state funding, commingled with public schools to raise test scores in Camden and in Hoboken, seemingly exacerbating the divide between those who live in newly gentrified neighborhoods and those in public housing. Molly Macris takes a look at the relationship between gentrification and de facto school segregation in her book, Public Housing and School Choice in a Gentrified City. Thank you for being here and congratulations on writing your book. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. What's unique about Hoboken's charter system? Yes, um, Hoboken's charter schools look very different than charter schools in places like Newark that we think of, kind of when we think of the charter school model. Hoboken's charter schools are not um, the no excuses charter schools. They're not part of larger CMOs or EMOs. Um, they're homegrown, locally grown by parents in the community, largely, um, and they attract advantaged children, um, white advantaged children, and they are, they don't have extended school days, they don't have extended school years. I write in the book that these are charter schools where the children in after school take chocolate making classes. They have trips to Puerto Rico, um, classes on genocide. And that does not reflect the broader population in Hoboken. Why don't people of color want to send their kids to charter schools? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. I mean, in some ways it does reflect the broader um, demographics of Hoboken because Hoboken is a very gentrified community. Um, but about 11% of community members do live below poverty level. And my book examines young people in public housing specifically. What I found in my research is there are largely three reasons why public housing residents aren't applying to the charter schools. One is a desire for their neighborhood school. So there's a community school where they have a a neighborhood feel. Many of the public housing residents went to that school themselves. They feel like their children are safe and protected in that school. It's convenient. There's also a level of what I call charter confusion, which is that parents in public housing are unaware that these charter schools are an option. They think they cost money, um, that they're a private school. I see this actually with advantaged parents too, but when their children hit school age, their social networks inform them about the option, and that's not sure. happening within this community. And lastly, there's a desire to fit in. So public housing residents, like all, like all parents, want their children to fit in in their school, and there's a feeling they won't in the charter schools. How does school choice undermine integration? Well, in Hoboken, it's, it's interesting because it's happening not just with the charter schools, but I also look with the district schools. So there's intra-district school choice, so parents can choose to send their children to um, three different elementary schools in the district. And um, advantaged parents often opt for the, the school that doesn't serve the majority of public housing students. So it's not just about the charter schools, it's also about school choice in general. And my book really looks at how school choice in general gives parents these options and parents are making very different choices sometimes informed and sometimes not. State Education Commissioner David Hesby ruled one of the charters could expand because it didn't effectively uh, segregate. What was the effect of that? Sure, that ruling came after I finished conducting research for my book, so it's a little bit out of the scope of my research, but I've certainly been following it and interested in it. I mean, it's a very contentious topic in the community with supporters of the charter schools and supporters of the district schools, um, both claiming that that is, that is not true. Um, I argue that really both sides could do a better job of representing the community as a whole and creating these racially and socioeconomically integrated options. Okay, Molly Macris, thank you for being with us. Thank you.